Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Ars Savage, and today I'll be showing you guys, in my opinion, the best way to take on the last phase of Zamorak, otherwise known as a phase 7, that gets introduced once you reach 100% in rage. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Before we get into phase 7 specifically, it's going to be important to set yourself up for success during the beginning phases. With that being said, if you guys have already had experience with the Zamorak and just need help on that last phase, feel free to use the timestamps to skip ahead. However, before you go, if this video helps you in any way, feel free to hit that like button, subscribe, and let me know in the comments section so I can make more videos like this for you guys. Now, with that out of the way, it's time to give you guys a brief overview of my setup, which includes my gear, inventory, and some abilities I will be using throughout the fight that you might want to consider unlocking to make things easier for yourself. Starting with my gear setup, you can see this is relatively budget-friendly, considering most people are rocking full crit bloom with FSOAs, and I'm just using using Ganodermic with the best in slot perks, but it's still crazy to think this is only tier 75 magic tank armor that works so well because of the anime dead spell. I also am using a Cyware wand and ore, but with the scripture of full, however consider using the scripture of jazz instead to avoid it taking additional damage. I have my igneous magic cape, I have an EOF with the gothic staff in it, I got some blast diffusion boots, and then I have enhanced, uh, also enchanted, care pack wrist wraps which is awesome and then the ring of death and then for my aura i like to go with majra here just because maniacal you will be taking more damage uh so this is just kind of one of those preference things that i like to do so i would just uh try different things out as well and see what you like best and then for my familiar you can see here i got the hellhound which absorbs 20 percent of any damage dealt to me by taking the damage itself this effect actually works with typeless damage as well, which is extremely helpful, especially when it comes to phase 7 and living through the numerous hard-hitting bombs. Another key component about the Hellhound is making sure it actually stays alive before reaching the final phase because if you don't use anything to maintain its life points, such as the Prism of Restoration or its own scrolls, then it will die before getting there. Next for my inventory, I have the Elven Ritual Shard, Enhanced Excalibur, Elder Overload Salve, Adrenaline Replenishment Potion, Power Burst of Vitality, Vulnerability Bombs, Super Restores, I have the Whip for my Bladed Dive Switch, I have the Shield for a Resonance Switch, I have my uh, Lantern for a Planted Feet Switch, I have the Noxious Staff for a Chroming Switch, I have the Blue EOF for an SGB Switch as well as the Wyvern Crossbow so I can actually use it. And this isn't totally necessary to do the skips that I will be showing you guys uh, in just a moment, but it will help, of course, uh, so just bring it if you have it. And then for my food choice, I have a blue bubber fish as well as a Sarah Bruise. And I have noticed a lot of people have been rocking like the sailfish soup or just sailfish. But personally, I think losing the adrenaline by eating it makes it a little bit more difficult. So once again, maybe try it with the, that uh, extra healing food and then try it with some like blue bubber fish to see if it helps you out as well. Uh, it's kind of just one of those personal preference things and uh, how you are able to maintain your life points. Uh, but next after that, I have the Inferno puzzle box uh, in the bottom next to the Cerebrus. This is basically picked up at the beginning of the dungeon uh, in one of the buildings on the right, and you can just pick it up for free, and it will reduce environmental damage within the Infernus by 40%, so it's really nice to have this at these higher enrage kills. So I uh, go get that for yourself. Then I also have these three rune pouches to cast things like the Prism of Restoration, Smoke Cloud, Animate Dead, Disruption Shield, Vengeance, and also like the Spellbook swapping as well. Uh, so uh, make sure you have everything you need if you are using those spells. And I'll be getting into where I use those uh, later on in the video. Now for those abilities I mentioned earlier that make the world of a difference are right here, Storm Shards with its counterpart Shatter. You can unlock this combination of abilities just from one mass cap ability codex bought from the GE for about 48 mil as of recording this video. To use these abilities, it's actually really easy. Storm Shards is a basic ability that generates you adrenaline, but doesn't do any damage and instead adds one stack to your target every time you use it. It has a 30 second cooldown, but you want to use it continuously as soon as you can to reach the max of 10 stacks before heading on to phase 7. Basically the stacks will carry over to the last phase and you will be able to use Shatter which is a threshold ability that releases your stacks and can do up to 30k damage. 
Now if you guys have tried phase 7 out for yourself or are watching this video before trying, just know it's a very difficult challenge that tests your ability to stay alive using defensive abilities at a fast pace but also being able to output an absurd amount of damage in a short period of time. Therefore, using every tool in your arsenal such as Storm Shards and Shatter just makes it so much easier and even if you don't have these abilities unlocked yet, I would highly suggest purchasing them in that Mass Cab Ability Codex because uh, you can just easily make your money back from doing Zamorak. That's enough for the setup, now let's get into this solo 100% kill of mine so I can show you guys some other important tips and tricks to help make your kills easier. Starting with the Edict Order, if you guys haven't already seen my video on the best Edict Order for kills below 100% in Rage, make sure to check that out for some additional information on how the Edicts work, but essentially that order was 1, 2, 6, 4, 5, and 3, which I still consistently use for my 99% kills, however the new Edict Order you're going to want to follow for your kills at 100% plus in Rage is 2, 4, 6, 1, 5, and 3. Once again, like I said in my last video, in my opinion this order is the best and it has worked flawlessly for me, but you will see other people using slightly different orders because personal preference does seem to play a role in it. Without going in depth of why you want to change the edict order at 100% plus in rage, it's because phase 7 will actually flip the stacks of your edicts and make it more difficult for you if not planned accordingly. That's all I'm going to explain, so once again if you're interested more about how the stacks work, check out that other video of mine in the description. Next, you will see I like to constantly throw vulnerability bombs and cast smoke cloud on Zamorak throughout the fight to essentially do more damage and allow me to skip all mechanics. Although this strategy might take more time to execute, it makes the fight much more fun and chill but also helps you reduce any potential food consumption. It's actually not too difficult even with this budget gear set up to know food phases 1 through 6 if you're utilizing a hellhound, anime dead, and soul split flicking at least if you're using magic. For range, consider holding aside your ECB spec until you feel more comfortable with the boss to transfer that additional healing to damage but also consider using onyx bolts for some additional healing. I wouldn't suggest meleeing, especially learning this boss, but your best chances I would say is get yourself a vampirism scrimshaw and just constantly cycle through your defensive abilities such as devotion and debilitate. If you guys are now wondering how do you skip mechanics, well let me show you that right now. At the start of the fight, Zamorak will always have a great HP bar and this symbolizes that he will not be cycling through mechanics but only using auto attacks. So, at the start, it's always going to be 5 magic attacks followed by 5 range attacks and keep repeating. You will not be seeing any melee attacks because that's included as one of Zamorak's mechanics that you can completely avoid if this method is done perfectly. So, back to the great HP bar, you're going to want to keep dealing damage until you reach the bottom where you're going to want to use your ultimate ability, which in my scenario will be Sunshine, and build your adrenaline a little more before stepping on the pad, making sure your hardest hitting abilities are off cooldown. Now when you stand on the pad, you will of course see that orange bar filling like normal, but to make this skip happen, you need to do as much damage as possible once the orange bar is full and that red HP bar comes up. Since you left the gray HP bar so low, the red one is correlated to it and should be effectively wiped out instantly and lead you directly for the green HP bar. My tip here would be if you know which of your abilities have a certain delay, try to time it perfectly do not miss out on any time. For example with Omni Power, I found making the input when the orange bar is about 3 quarters full works perfectly to hit Zamorak right when the red HP bar shows up. Then during the green HP bar, you're going to need to get it to that first arrow just above where it tells you the enrage you're on, and the tricky part is you only have until after one auto attack to do so. With this example, I was able to phase the Zamorak right before that auto attack hit me, but I had maybe a couple seconds before it was too late and I would get my first mechanic being the melee hit. Now after your successful skip, you will be back to the great HP bar and now need to kill the witch in the infernus, and that's all. Just keep repeating the same process for the rest of the edicts. If you guys are having any difficulty with skips, don't worry and just keep practicing because it's really not an easy thing to execute perfectly every time and even I still make mistakes constantly. 
However, I have learned recording your kills and watching back what you're doing can be such a difference maker and save you so much time if you realize one small mistake you were doing. So maybe give that a try if you haven't already. Here we go, the moment you've all been waiting for, phase seven. So it's a good idea to start with the 100% adren. So make sure to set yourself up before phasing. And if you need, you can actually freedom or anticipate mid phase to gain adren. Then, I like to instantly use Natural Instinct and kill the demon as soon as possible using a Vuln Bomb and Thresholds if you need to, but personally Dragon Breath into Combust works very well as you can see here to maintain Adrenaline and uh, do a lot of damage with the help of those Care Pack Wrist Wraps, letting Combust do all its damage instantly and moving the dragon to double its effect. Also, while you're doing this, make sure to have your magic prayer on because you will get two magic auto attacks at the start while taking out the demon. Then after the demon is dead and the two magic auto attacks are over, throw on that melee protection prayer because you cannot soul split the runes and you will want to have just one less input when the time comes and you'll need it. Next, I'm using Sunshine and make sure you have that planted feet switch on because trust me, you will need that extra time. With that being said, the strategy is really only targeted towards range and magic, but if you're using melee, I would still continue watching to learn the mechanics and how to deal with them from another perspective. After using your ultimate, continue to build a Dren on ideally one of the runes closest to Zamorak because what's going to happen is in solo, Zamorak will choose two runes in a specific order that will be pulled towards him and what you have to do is kill them in that order. So if you get lucky and one of those runes are chosen, you will already have a head start but if it doesn't happen, there are no consequences unless you fully kill the wrong rune. It's also very important to kill these runes as fast as possible because the typeless bombs coming after will have their damage scale to how fast you do it. Obviously, the faster you kill them, the less damage you will be taking and the easier this will be. But what makes it difficult is making sure your high hitting abilities are off cooldown once it's time to kill Zamorak because that's when you're really going to need the damage. Also, please make sure to Vaughn the runes to make it easier and make sure to Vaughn Zamorak as well as I forgot to here. On to the most intense part of phase 7. So just as you kill the rune, you're going to want to use devotion for this method and once again make sure your melee prayer is on. Then you can see I'm getting into my sunshine as fast as possible using shatter to release my shards for 30k damage and using omni as well as spam clicking my power burst of vitality to double my hp for the first big red bomb that's hitting me right now for just over 11k damage. Now just after that melee hit you should be using your adren pot switching to soul split because all the next hits will be typeless so your protection prayers will have no ability to reduce their damage and you debilitate to reduce the 4 upcoming typeless hits. If your damage was good enough you might be able to get the kill before those 4 hits are over like I was able to do here and this would be considered a 1 cycle. But you're going to want to know how to do a 2 cycle in case anything goes wrong. So let me show you guys how to handle what comes next. Here is another one of my 100% enraged kills where RNG was an evident factor because the last rune chosen was one of the farther ones. So it would either cost you more inputs to get back faster or if you choose to run back like I did, you make it more difficult to deal the damage needed in the time frame. I was just over 22k damage shy of the 1 cycle so what happens is immediately after the 4th and final typeless hit is released, Zamorak will go immune so you can't deal any more damage for the time being. Then Zamorak will go for another melee hit so since devotion is on cooldown this time you want to keep your soul split on and use resonance to heal the first big melee hit and then a smaller melee hit will follow right after. If you're confident enough try to flick to melee prayer in the one tick window but if not it's totally fine as you can just tank the smaller hit. Then the hard hitting up right of the bomb will come again just like before after the first melee hit. So what you want to do here is reflect and disruption shield. I know not everybody has disruption shield but trust me you're going to want to get it for this boss and many other high end bosses. So check out the description for the link to my discord server where you can have access to the traveling merchant bot that will tell you the stock of the merchant and the world it's on to get yourself those livid plants and get you your disruption shield without ever having to actually play the mini game like I did. In the meantime before you have disruption shield unlocked I would say try to use immortality for this one uh, but it's going to be more difficult to make sure your adrenaline is at 100% and get it off in time with everything happening so fast. 
Finally, if you survive that absolute crazy sequence of events, then first off, you're a beast, but secondly, you have to repeat what you just did at the start of the phase by killing the demon and taking out the runes in the order he pulls them. Another tip as well here to solidify the kill if you really need to is to stack up the 10 shards again. Although it's going to take all that time to do it, don't worry about how hard the bombs will hit you because your plan should be to get the kill before any of them reach you. You can easily shatter and get an omni in for 50k damage before that first bomb reaches you, but put protection from melee on just in case you're cutting it close. Well that's all I have for you guys in this video, thank you so much for watching and this should be everything you need to know to get yourself that 100% enraged kill, but if for any reason you still have some questions please let me know in the comment section and I would be happy to answer them for you. Also, if you guys want to support the channel even more and allow me to make more content like this, consider becoming a channel member by clicking at that join button next to the subscribe button. By no means should you feel obligated to do so, and any support is very much appreciated. But other than that, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Make sure to turn on your notifications to never miss a new stream or video. Also, hit that like and subscribe button for me, and I'll see you in the next one.